I am Susanda. I'm based in Pretoria, North, and I'm a visual artist, currently signed by the London Art Merchants and represented by them. I'm also emerging as South Africa's first life painter. I discovered my passion when I was 13, where I would trace um, near like animations like Goldilocks. Instead of reading, I didn't really like reading, so instead of reading the books, I take books with pictures so I could trace the pictures. And then I took it more seriously in grade seven when I started drawing in pencil. In grade eight, I taught myself how to shade. And then in grade 11, which was last year, I was forced by my art teacher to paint. And I fell in love with it thereafter and it's been my passion ever since. My work is highly inspired by the prejudices and injustices of our society, whereas I try to be a voice for those whose, voice has been, whose voices have been drowned by society. Um, I try to address issues that we fail to discuss in our daily conversations and I try to bring that about so such things could be addressed and hopefully someone who can do something about it will do something about it, you know. I've had a lot of challenges in my journey, you know, emerging as a, an artist, especially being a black woman in South Africa. It's quite difficult because not everything is handed to you. You have to go out there, look for opportunities push yourself out there, do things that you never thought you would do. So it's been both challenging and quite a learning experience as well because I've become very independent, especially considering the fact that my, I, I actually fund my own work. I, I'm a photographer part-time, so with the money that I get from you know, photography, I used to invest in my art. So it's been quite, it has, it has its ups and downs. In the art industry, like I said, it's quite challenging because there are a lot of creatives and you never really know what your client or customer is looking for. So I do take in commissions here and then when I don't have to produce to sell, then I do um, take commissions where I get paid to do certain works. And I'm a photographer, as well as a certified photographer. I do that on the side. I'm also a sign model, so I have that income to keep funding my work when my art isn't making the money for me. I have a lot of people that come up to me while I'm even sitting up, you know, before all of my work is up, that just want to know what the message behind the work is, or feel inspired by the work, or just are so absorbed by the concept that they, they, they're left, I don't know, blown away. So yes, I do believe that my work is very, you know, um, influential and also the fact that I try to address certain issues and people want to know what those issues are, it gets them talking. I just spoke to someone who didn't know what the, that portrait about um, I'm not the condition, don't call me albino is about. And he didn't even know that people with albinism were being you know, killed in Tanzania and Mozambique and places like that. So I believe it is. My highlights have been the fact that when I put my work out there, I was very scared at first, but people respond to it very positively. People love it. And it's always amazing to see how people interpret your work without having to tell them the story behind it or having to explain the concept. And I've been um, noticed by the London art merchants who hit me up through um, Instagram. They wanted to represent my art and I was like, why not? I've exhibited at a couple of events. This is my second work arts event. But the last one I painted live and I've actually found that I'm more interested in live painting, which is something that's not done in South Africa. So I'm bringing it home. Live painting is basically um, creating a concept and developing it right on the spot whereas I'm given a specific amount of time to put a message out. Say for instance, um, an artist, a musician is performing there and I would inter interpret their music visually by painting how I, you know, I, I want to imp interpret their music. And also, if it's, that's not the case, then I basically just um, express myself, but in a manner that everyone can relate to. At my last event, which was last week Saturday, I painted a portrait of Casper Nieves in commemoration of his fill up if and be, and that was quite a great experience. The art industry is, is the fastest growing industry, but it's also 
a very challenging one because there are a lot of creatives out there. So my advice to an upcoming or emerging artist would be to stick to what they're doing, discover their style, know what they specialize in and not try to compare themselves with, to other artists and to never give up because it's difficult to you know, get someone to see things the way you do but it becomes even more difficult when you give up on your dream because you're trying to compensate for other people's you know, perspectives or like views on it. So I would strongly you know, recommend that if you're emerging as an artist, keep working, keep drawing, develop your fundamentals. That's very important. I still draw every day just to keep my eye in. And never lose what you stand for. Stand for something and don't be shaken. Never be shaken. I think these are incredible opportunities because this is where we get to, you know, build our confidence as artists. That's where we get to, you know, be criticized, get positive and, you know, our negative constructive criticism. So we know what we need to be, you know, become better at or work on or um, simply network, make new contacts, know that if you need something or you want to collaborate, you can always hit that person up. So I think these kind of events are very, very essential, especially in our day and age because a lot of people are too absorbed by technology and so much that people don't know how to communicate in, you know, physically. So these events are both essential for the artist and also for the artist's self-esteem and confidence as an artist. With us, we offer a support system more than anything. That means sharing their work, that means commenting their work, collaborating. That's also what we try to do. We make artists collaborate with each other to bring certain different South African narratives together and sort of form a style. Like what is South African style painting? What is South African style poetry? How does it come? And that's how you create that by creating a community. So that's also what it offers. They are part of that creative process. We offer management. We sign them up to associations such as BASA, such as uh, VANSA, the Visual Arts Network of South Africa, which gives them job opportunities down the line. You can never have enough support, but it's been very encouraging how the community of youth have been receptive to what we do. They're the ones who keep us alive, the people who support us online, the people who come to the shows. Most importantly, the people who consistently come to the shows. We have a lot of loyalists. Because what we represent is substance, we attract a lot of loyalty because people connect with what is going on. On a human level, on a spiritual level, cultural, economical, political level, we connect as human beings, which is what separates this social gathering from any other social gathering. So for one, I think events like these, uh, they create awareness of the creative industry, the kind of products we have or services that we have. Essentially, the world cannot function without creatives. Like, even if you are a corporate business, you still need your creative, like your graphic designers, your, you know, your jingles to make your product sellable. So it's more about what we can do, creating awareness, now going into the economics of things as to how does then the creative industry bring revenue to the South African economy or to the arts industry. So it's, it's essentially just how do we trade off each other and then create a sustainable environment for all. Um, well, I think that in South Africa, even, even though for 21 years we haven't had apartheid, it's very easy to still be in specific bubbles like White people, Afrikaans people have like these bubbles where they think that certain truths are true but in order to truly be a South African you need to forget about that bubble because um, you're lying to yourself. So being here um, pops that bubble. <laughs> Yeah, man, I think we definitely need more of these kind of environments. This is a space where young creatives, young African creatives can display themselves, can dress how they feel like dressing, can make the music that they feel like making and present it to like-minded people. So we definitely need more of this, man. More. Well, there's a great beauty in having a conglomerate of people who have an understanding about um, social issues, because that's pretty rare in our times, because a lot of, our, a lot of um, 
the youth are, tend to be despondent with regards to issues of our identity and how, that, how we actualize as individuals. And I think what's so great about this space is the fact that it's a whole group of people who are like-minded, whereas in most instances you feel completely out of place. In this instance you feel like, you know what, I'm actually at home. I'm with people who understand what I'm saying, understand that when I feel oppressed, I feel oppressed, and if I want to express it, I'll express it, and I will not be policed. And I think that's what's so great about this environment, that idea of um, security amongst people with like-minded thoughts. The art community is, 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 is at an amazing place because of the place we are at consciously, because of the place we are at as the new Rainbow Nation, you know what I'm saying? We are the first adults who are fully born under the guise of freedom, you know? So that's the exciting part about it. The industry is what needs to adapt to that, which, is, which gives what we're doing purpose. There needs to be more of our narrative there. There needs to be more of platforms that are owned by the people who are the majority so that their narrative is also represented in an accurate and truthful manner. Instead of from a certain perspective, it's a well-rounded perspective because it is by the people. So the hook's gonna come again. Yeah. Some hundred bags throw them up to the ceiling. Yeah. She got a man.